competition for resources, etc. Within that, we see that by 2008, we'll all be living in a different landscape entirely, uh, geopolitically, economically, everything. The level of changes that will hit the United States will be more severe than the emotional changes that led to or were expressed in the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. Holy cow. Now, I, I understand the emotional that you said, but what about uh, geological? Do you see the, the same degree of changes from a geological point of view, in other words, physical landmass, or we see a lot of indications that that is indeed the case. Now, the landscape changes I'm talking about at the moment for the 2008 are more human relationship, geopolitical, yeah, right. economic sort of thing. But nonetheless, there are uh, indications of large-scale uh, Earth events over the course of the next three years that participate in the, uh, I want to say, the jumbled up, of it all. Humans will be suffering uh, their own relationship issues and working out all of those kind of things within a context of overall militancy and aggression and competition within a further context of overall continuing mm. hand solar system changes. Yeah. Not just related to Earth. I'll touch on that a little more now. Uh, because that's a <laughs> let's face it that's that's a very very important topic getting into something like what's happening with the sun now correct uh, we've seen many of those uh, we've been very accurate with that I have to say I mean if I were standing up and I had the uh, the inclination I'd buff my nails and say you know we're pretty good with weather yeah. we've done very well with our weather process and I say we by the way because I do have an associate who prefers to remain nameless because he thinks that I'm about to be scooped up in a net any time and he runs all of my server stuff, taking that burden off. Uh, his uh, background is such that um, he has very definite skills, but he doesn't he doesn't do the interpretation very well. But he does follow up and puts it all in spreadsheets, and he gets all excited when we actually get hits that he claims. Wow! And is, he prefers to be called Igor. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he, he's a great guy. I right. worked with him at an actual job when I was employed by people and uh, found him to be the most reliable of fellow and well-trained by the military in his skills. Okay. Well, Cliff, you're not a whole lot better because you you made me promise never to give your name out you know, to anybody. So, I mean, uh, come on. But I do understand because what what you're talking about really and truly could and probably does put you... At a risk. level uh, with a big bullseye on your back. I believe that's the case. Yeah. And yeah. that's why, you know, I'm frequently concerned for George's safety, but I believe he's removed enough that I needn't worry about that aspect of it. I think but bear so. in mind, throughout history, there's only been one problem with fortune telling, and that's accuracy. Yeah. Well, there's another way to look at it, and if you go back to the Bible and all the prophets... Um, Remember what happened if a prophet was wrong once. I'm much more afraid of the modern prophets than being <laughs> correct. Yeah, you're right. Because you stir up and you, you know, you suddenly instantly stick your head up and then you're a target. You bet you. Now, let's 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 get into this deal a little bit about events outside of planet Earth. Events that might affect us like the sun. Let's uh, go all the way back to 1997 then because I was okay. looking for sun networks. Okay. Because I, that was one of the first epiphanies is, aha, people are buying Sun Networks because they got all excited because of this, not because it actually done anything. Mm. And that accounted for a price rise, and that was the epiphany. And so I started modeling for Sun. And lo and behold, instead of getting Sun Networks, you know, Stanford University Networks Computing Centers, yeah, right, right. I ended up getting references to the Sun and how people were emotionally worried about the Sun in 1997. Not a lot of people. Yeah. Nowhere near what we've got now. Um, but it, it really triggered a change in my whole thinking, and I started going, well, pretty nut, nut job at the time. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, let's let's address the sun for a minute. What <coughs> major events, Cliff, do you see that could happen in the next, let's say, up up through two thousand eight? Um, we don't. Events? We don't. Okay, we don't have to have that good of a view that long. Okay. Usually, what we're dealing with relative to the sun is those. That data set is usually in seven months or less. And so we get a view now that uh, the, 
the, the things that are ongoing on the sun now, we spoke about in Alta 405, I believe, or 605. Mm -hmm. um, those spoke about the sun's continuing uh, robustness and, and redoubling its effort to put out energy and getting all whipped up and, mm -hmm. and throwing out fibers and things. We also got to the point where we saw three events in a single day, uh, three separate flares, not a long-term continuous CME, but three separate flare events from three parts of the sun in a single day, which is yet to occur. Uh, we also see that the level of energy is supposed to rise and so on. So the sun will not be calm and quiet. And it is a major, major, major driver. In fact, um, sure. not the ultimate driver, but a significant local driver for events on Earth of all kinds. Yeah, now, these these potential events that you see, the three in one day, how might that affect planet Earth? For whatever reason, and however one wants to interpret it, something, yeah. some event from the sun is likely to, or will lead direct participate in how humans view property ownership. Can you explain that a little more? There, there is likely to be a weather event or a solar event that that, uh, that triggers a weather event, which right. in turn causes a large-scale property damage, such that people won't necessarily return to their homes, right. and there are people, therefore, people around the globe will suddenly say, "Hmm, 13 million refugees, 13 million people walked away from their property and their mortgages, and so on. Will it happen here next?" Wow, it could be an earthquake. Could be a volcano. Could no, be I think not. No? I think something much more uh, directed, directly relatable to a solar event. In other words, we may get a huge solar flare, yeah. and it may so fry infrastructure that uh, the electrical companies might not be uh, back and operating for nine months, and yet we have heat so bad that you can't live there because of no air conditioning. Wow. Bear in mind, in 1969, we had a solar flare that took out a big chunk of the Canadian power oh, structure, you. and parts of it were not operational for six months because there were no switches. They right. had to actually build them to replace it. We're in the same state now, only it's worse. There aren't the factories to build the switches. No, no, the factories are all gone. Correct. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. Um, do you see any other potential solar activity that could have a direct effect on us? Yes. Um, solar system wide, all kinds of stuff. Uh, some of it that we probably shouldn't discuss. And <laughs> within the, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm just laughing at you because I'm going to find out why. But go ahead. Uh, well, there, there also is some other solar aspects of this. The major long term indications that we have that go out to 2008 suggest that during this period of time, uh, at least insofar as we can see 2008, and, and by that I mean December-ish of 2008, yeah. so really early 2009, we're going to find that the sun is not at all what the scientists have been saying for some time. Uh, this is going towards mechanics, the uh, electrical universe sure. uh, expressions, and also to the idea that the Understanding the shift in consciousness and the emotional relationship between humans and the sun is going to significantly change because of solar activity. Can you How would you feel about the sun, for instance, if uh, every day for the next 45 days your particular area was 110 degrees? And that would be directly related to an activity on the sun. Correct, because every yeah. single day we get a flare. Yeah. What about uh, something like a radiation coming in from the sun? I don't have anything that shows that sort of thing, but I don't know that I would pick it up. Okay. Right. Bear in mind, we're we're not, you know, psychically, psychically looking out into the into the yeah. future and reading time or anything. Okay. We're reading emotional, interpreting emotional values that come from language shifts. So usually, what we're after is shifts in behavior of humans. That's really what we're seeing come through. And then we make mm. a broader interpretation as saying, hmm, what could cause this shift? Wow. Jeez, that's wild. What about something on the, hmm, on the scale, Cliff, of a planet X coming in? Because you, you and I have talked about this before. George and I have talked about it before. Do you pick up stuff like that? I certainly do. But in most of it, I end up having to throw away. 
Because right. if you'll you'll see, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with uh, politics per se, and a problem with religion insofar as this technology is concerned. Because almost all the words are hot, almost all the words are continuously hot, and they're either for or against, and they're equally hot in both cases. Hmm. So because of the sharp duality, there's no gray area for me to muck about in. Oh, I see what you mean. But does that make it right or wrong? It means it's usually something I avoid because it's too difficult for me to place an interpretation because I get down to whether I would fall into one camp or another. Now, let me say that we've been continuously showing dust showing up. We get those kind of indications out of the language. Um, So there's going to be a lot of, uh, clearly a lot of extrasolar activity relating to particulate matter of some size. Coming down on us. Correct. What the source yeah. is appears to be in material. If you go all the way back to Velikovsky, right. at this particular point in time, we're in the tail of Venus. Right. Venus is a highly electrically charged uh, planet, mm-hmm. and we'll be a, uh, getting a large accretion of, da- uh, of uh, part particulate matter, some of which may be fiery particles. And if we read all the way back into some of the Sanskrit texts, that's precisely what occurs. Small little fiery hailstones rain down for a number of months. Yeah. In in the reading, if I understand what what we have talked about, not only tonight but uh, but in the past too, Cliff, is that that life itself is very cyclic, and 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 there are patterns. I guess if you could go back far enough and see the cycles of patterns of life on Earth, and that that should include everything. It should include emotional, political. Uh, geological, all, all vibrations, right? Agree, all, yeah. yeah. Um, have you been able to begin to define what some of these cycles might be, the patterns, and how how we can tell where we are on that cycle itself at this time? I have, but I don't know that my insight is any more meaningful than some of the other people that have been there ahead of us. Uh, let's take Buckminster Fuller, for instance. Okay. Uh, in chapter 12 of Synergetics, he discusses numerology. Mm-hmm. He was sitting around one day, and someone brought up the, com- uh, the concept of numerology and meaning on numbers, and he says, hmm, I wonder if there's something to it. Let's go experiment. Right. And he did, and he came back and says, yeah, there is something to it. Then somebody brought up the concept of astrology. He mm-hmm. said, hmm, I'll go off and look at it. And he came back and said, boy, I just won't live long enough. That he was at that point, I think... Uh, mm-hmm. 65 or so, and and said he would never be able to do it, uh, simply because it took too long of a study. So I would agree that in precision and in the main, planetary alignments and stellar alignments are certainly good indicators if one could assign a meaning to them because they're pan-solar system observable. The issue, of course, is assigning meaning. So you have various different uh, kinds of uh, competing systems. Mundane astrology out of uh, originating out of the old Normans, uh, the Romans, the Vedics, or whoever. So you have these competing systems. Who's right? Some probably have better clues than others. Right. I would actually put more money on a Vedic system simply because it's much older than anything we've got in the mundane Anybody even going right. back to the ancient um, Egyptian schools of thought mm-hmm. still is only reaching back about 6,000 years, whereas we've got stellar indications within a lot of the Vedic literature that take it back 48,000, 50,000 years, no, no problem. So they certainly have more of a handle on things. That's amazing. So I'd agree that there are cycles and indicators that we can get a handle on. But then we come back to meaning. Okay. I won't live long enough to investigate that. You and Bucky, right? Correct. In... In, in understanding the concept, then, um, we do have cycles, and I think everybody understands that. And again, No, no, I'm sorry, that's not the case. No? I have to disagree. Most people do not live that way and do not believe that. Most of the minds on the planet, especially those within the Western influence, are linear. And would disregard your, your idea. In fact, it's antithetical to them, and you'll find you'll get a lot of resentment because oh. they're in the world of a linear progression 